Okay guys, so we're finally to part three of the 1950s and science fiction. And this is the part where we're gonna get it all to relate and talk about the literature pieces and what we will actually be reading in class. So um, here's the link to literature. From this time period, you have authors writing books about trying to create the perfect equal community. Because remember the time period, the theme was everybody wanted to be the same. They all wanted to be equal and just like everybody else. However, there's an issue with that kind of mentality because you tend to see that there's no um, individuality. There's no creativeness. If everybody is the same, how can you celebrate diversity? So many um, authors were looking at this idea of creating a perfect community, but generally how that idea can go horribly wrong because there's something definitely stifling about um, everybody being the same. So this is the idea of utopia or dystopia. So a utopia is a perfect community, whereas a dystopia, a dystopia is when that perfect community becomes corrupted in some way. And so uh, many of the stories, short stories, and um, I haven't quite decided on the novel choice yet. Um, in the past, I've read Fahrenheit 451, um, but we also have the option of maybe doing uh, The War of the Worlds. So I haven't quite decided yet. I need to make that decision soon and I'll, I'll let you know. But most of the stuff that we've been looking at um, or we will be reading is under this utopia dystopia idea. One of the great examples of classic examples of this is Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut and we actually have a film um, short film adaptation of this as well called 2081. So we'll read the story, we'll do a, a proficiency on it, but then we also will watch the movie uh, 2081 which will be fun. The, um, again, like I said, the novel we might be looking at is either The War of the Worlds or Fahrenheit. War of the Worlds is a lot shorter, and there have been film adaptations of it that uh, work really well, so we can show clips from that from the film to help our understanding of the concept. Um, and then Fahrenheit is a great book, but it's a lot longer, and the film that was made from it is not very good. Um, and I've had students in the past that have gotten a little bit confused with that with that book, but also some students have really loved it. So we'll need to make a decision um, either way. Um, a couple of other novels that we aren't going to read, but I will recommend um, for extra credit are Brave New World and 1984. These are all really classic examples of this type of literature from the time period. However, it's still a really popular topic, The Hunger Games. Um, the Giver, the Ugly series, there's a ton really that follow this idea of trying to think about um, a perfect world in the future, what it will look like and how, how it will be run. Um, generally speaking, like the government policies involved in trying to keep order and make everybody equal and the same. Um, Obviously, The Hunger Games is probably one of the more popular stories of the of the time period. The Giver is what um, regular language arts will be reading, and that's a fabulous book. If you haven't read that, it's a nice, short, quick read, um, and it's got some really intense topics. Um, I actually miss teaching that one. But um, if you haven't read The Giver and you like this type of, of storyline, then I definitely would recommend that. Um, I do need to mention, though, obviously not all science fiction is about utopia and dystopia. Some are about scientific advancements that are somewhat plausible yet still set in the future and could potentially come true. So um, a couple of more short stories that we're going to read in class are Rain, Rain, Go Away um, by Isaac Asimov, and it's kind of dealing with weather advancements and the idea of aliens. And The Veld by Ray Bradbury is about technological advancements and our unhealthy addictions to that technology. And we're going to read that one in class too. You guys are going to love it. I even found um, some fun videos from YouTube that will go along with The Veld, including a soundtrack by Dead Mouse, which is kind of fun. So, um, oh, and then one last one we're also going to look at is called... Um, it's actually called X, a fabulous child story, but I always call it or refer to it as Baby X, and I think you guys probably will too. It's a shorter title um, by Lois Gold, and that's actually about a scientific experiment and advance, advancements in um, society and change, and gender equality actually too, um, and we're going to read that one in class, and that one is fabulous for class discussion. I look forward to reading that one with you guys as well. So um, that's, that's all for this entire portion and setting us up for our next unit, which we're going to begin next week. So um, please remember to go back to your WISC and do a quick summary and question on this link to literature, which is basically what this last and final part was about. 
And don't forget my summary expectations and question expectations. Your WISC will be due on Monday at the beginning of class, so please make sure that you um, have watched all three parts to these 1950s notes, and hopefully you've also had a chance to see some of the um, video clips to support the 1950s and some of your your fellow students have been posting really fun commercials as well as other um, YouTube videos if you can't get my videos to load I know that's been a problem for some people um, otherwise contact me through Edmodo if you're having issues or difficulties and I will um, see you on Monday or try to resolve those problems over the weekend for you um, otherwise I'll help you in class on Monday all right I'll see you later